Hello there, welcome back to another episode of Satisfactory. First, I'd like to thank all of you who subscribed, liked, and commented on the previous episodes. I greatly appreciate the warm welcome to the series. I'm definitely behind on getting this episode out. I had a rather pressing matter to work out, which I'm, which was consuming a lot of my time. However, things are back to normal, and I hope to have a regular schedule of content coming out with other games as well as Satisfactory. With the formalities out of the way, let's jump right into the episode. There is a lot to do, and initially I was really hoping to have the starter base done in this episode, but considering some of the things I'm planning, I think it's going to take more than uh, one episode to finish things up. And one way we're going to do that is we're going to unlock blueprints here, and we're going to go ahead and uh, see how much of this base we can do with uh, a few blueprints that I have in mind. I'll go ahead and send this into space. So what was messing with my game before was I had Permaday installed, and uh, so now it rains. Hooray! Uh, yeah. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll get our blueprint designer here, and uh, we'll just go ahead and uh, slap it down right about here. And then, uh, yeah, looks good. Let's go ahead and uh, see what we can make with this thing. Now, originally I was going to work on some fixmas here, but unfortunately that didn't work out. I had initially set everything up down here in the basement and uh, just ended up having to put it all back into storage, really. So we'll uh, use that for next year and uh, we'll have all the resources we need to really get a factory up and going real quick on that one. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that and hopefully they do some stuff um, this year unlike last year so I did make a few uh, blueprints initially like this constructor here which I'm pretty happy with um, so I was thinking about how to route the power and I came up with this little di uh, design using uh, the painted beams but there's like some little tricks with the um, blueprint maker uh, it doesn't like it when it goes into the floor there uh, so we'll clear this out here and um, We'll go ahead and start making a foundation. So what I want to do here is I want to uh, make, uh, this would be like a four by four, this grid with um, uh, four constructors on each side. And then uh, I think that will be a pretty good start because uh, we're going to go ahead and make uh, our constructor area where we need to make our plates and our, uh, our rods and our screws so uh, yeah this is uh, looking pretty good and this rain is getting kind of annoying <laughs> so I wish it would stop already uh, so we go ahead and take our uh, constructor here and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, line it up um, so another reason why I'm using this one meter foundation is it's gonna help me line up things on the other side which we'll see here in a minute uh, so there we have uh, now we're gonna go ahead and put uh, put a floor hole here um, so yeah we can't put a, a floor holes in the uh, foundation as well and the sides are kind of annoying so everything has to like really fit within this 4x4 four four grid and then we'll go ahead and put our uh, merger here and uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use all mark 3's so everything is pretty much at the max um, that we'll have here so let's go ahead and put uh, another Constructor here, get everything lined up. Everything has to be perfect. It must be perfect. And uh, bam, everything just slaps out nice and easy. Although there are some things about the blueprint maker that are really annoying. Um, I'll show you that here in a minute when I load up a few other things here. But uh, so we can't copy a blueprint. You know, like if we hit the middle. Uh, icon or uh, the middle mouse button here it just copies the constructor yeah so we'll have to uh, just go ahead and use uh, the blueprint I keep forgetting to really make my toolbar and uh, yeah so we'll go ahead and finish off this blueprint just like that and uh, yeah so basic setup here we have everything uh, going down this manifold here and then heading out and I like all of our power poles 
The only thing I can't do is set up the conveyor lifts because it goes um, when you it goes into the blueprint maker, which is stupid. So we'll just go ahead and uh, save it, and uh, then we can go on and build it. Let's head over to where we're going to build our constructors. And as you can see here, we have a door. Uh, it's pretty okay with this door. Um, you know, we have some pillars here to kind of give it a little accent. And these kind of overlap, so he has this little whoosh. And uh, here we are. And uh, so we have these notches in the uh, platform here. So what this is going to do is going to help us just kind of slot in our uh, constructors here. And it should be pretty easy to line things up. So we'll go over to um, we'll go to our constructor here. And oh, you see that? Okay, I'll show you what that was doing in a minute because it's really, really stupid. Um, so yeah, we can just go ahead and uh, make sure we get the uh, right orientation. Then we're gonna slide everything into the corner till things turn blue. And we want to make sure for sure. Before we click it and then click yeah because we definitely don't want to be disassembling this and here we go boom we have a complete setup of four uh we'll just have to come in here and add all the little accents kind of like a model kit oh yeah so you remember when uh that little animation happened where things just kind of like flew out of our body when we were loading up the blueprint. Well, that's because it was actually loading up in the blueprint maker for some reason. So yeah, look, check, this is so stupid. Oh, look, there's my old self. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, this is like, I don't know why it does this, but it just seems to once in a while load in the blueprint maker as you're placing the blueprint in. So we can just go ahead and clear this and uh, we'll just take our resources back. So yeah, I mean, it's taking our resources too, which is stupid. And uh, yeah, that's uh, one, of the, one of the annoying things about the blueprint maker. But we have far more important things to work on, like uh, the logistics to our constructors. So we're gonna build an area down below here and we'll come over here and, um, well, I like to keep everything as symmetrical as possible. So we'll start from uh, the center here, and then we'll just kind of work our way out. This is going to be the actual floor, but what I want to do here is um, um, I want to get underneath our constructors here. So let's go ahead and... Uh, uh, so we can start peeling away the extra layer here and revealing our... Um, our hole here, our, you know, our lift holes. So uh, yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and uh, reveal all this, and then we'll have all that, and then we can come down here, and um, yeah, so then we'll have our resources come down from there, and then we'll have more constructors over here, and there's just so much. But uh, I'm liking what I'm doing here, so we'll just continue here, and then, um, We'll just tidy things up a little bit here. Let's see. Uh, get rid of this. And uh, we'll work on our foundations a bit. So then we can eventually start bringing our iron down. So we'll go ahead and um, uh, we're going to go ahead and put uh, a couple of conveyor walls like right in the middle here. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and bring down our lifts. And then we're going to go ahead and extend our belts out to some more conveyor lifts. Which will let everything come down and flow nicely into the center here. Now what we have to do is uh, finish off our constructor. So we'll go ahead and add um, another set of four here. Make sure everything is lined up because I definitely don't want to have to pull it all apart again. And um, then we're going to go ahead and add a uh, two by two. This will face a little bit in the opposite direction. But um, so the idea is everything on this side is going to be is going to be making our plates and rods. And let's see, I think this is yeah okay. The output would be to our left here. And of course, with everything we do on this side, we have to do on the other side. 
So here's our our constructors, and I think it looks pretty good so far. Um, so now all we have to do is uh, basically go underneath and uh, peel away our foundations, like so. Let's go ahead and uh, make sure this is all exposed. And of course, we're going to do it on the other side as well. Get all this ready so that we can now start uh, doing the hard part, which is getting it all from here up to there. Um, so let's see here. Now this side is going to be screws and uh, I think I did my math right. Um, now originally I was going to use copper on this side, but um, I, I, I didn't want to have to deal with overclocking. and. Um, I decided to actually unlock our advanced steel so we can have Mark II, um, Mark II miners. So then we can go ahead and just feed all of our smelters and should give us, um, I think it's what, 300 in, let's see, 240 on each side. So like 360 on each side. Yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and um, let's see, I guess we'll put a smart splitter here and uh, I think this is what I want to do. This is the part where it's going to take me a minute to figure out. After the smart splitter, we'll just go ahead and put some regular splitters here. And since we're really only consuming like 50 this line here, we can take the smart splitter and um, let's see. Uh, this goes right. Yeah, I guess we're going to go this way. Um, so we want to set the splitter so that... Um, so iron will go to our left here and it'll go down the center and then we'll have the overflow go to the right, which then will go off to the rest of our system here. And, um, so now that feeds that. So now we have two feeds here and, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So we have everything kind of worked out here. Um, went ahead and did this side as well. So let's kind of go over what I did here. Um, so these are all manifolds, of course. And um, so our center point here, that's going to be consuming 100. So we have 100. Uh, let's see, we have 100 iron here. We have 50 iron here. And then we have 50 over there. And the way we did is so we brought in 240 here. So this should fill up and then send like 20, 20 that way. Or with whatever's remaining yeah 20 20 that way and then we bring in our 120 line which then divides it by 60 here so we send 60 this way and it combines with the 20 so we have uh so 80 going that way and eventually whatever's left over will come back over here and um it'll help fill this up so we have we only need 200 here and then we need another 120 for um, this side uh, so we have our 360 over here actually all dedicated to making plates and then um, then when this all fills up the remaining leftover 120 plus the 40 over here will come in for our rods and then this should not overflow, but for whatever reason, I, if it overflows, we can figure out what to do with it. Um, and then, yeah, then all we have to do is take all the resources that we're producing, which is like there's one output there, there's another output there. We'll have 200 screws there. We'll have 200 screws over here. And I forget how many over here. Um, probably like 100, less than 100, I think. I think it's 75. I can't remember because I had to underclock that so we can dedicate 240 over here. Um, but yeah, it's nice and neat. And so we'll, everything will flow this way, it'll go up, everything will come down, and then it'll flow out this way, and then we'll go up to our assemblers. So the idea is that with all these resources, we can produce 10 rotors, 10 modular frames, and 10 reinforced plates. And of course, the additional reinforced plates just to make the modular frames 
So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how that's going to work. Man, this is coming along quite nicely. I'm really, really happy with it. Um, so, yeah, let's just go ahead and get started on routing all of this out there. Okay, so we have the underside logistics here. We have power from our constructors going through these power beams. And, in fact, I really wish I could put them through these uh, painted beams, I should say. Um, but uh, the nature of the painted beam is what it is. And um, I'm still debating this style. I like it because it, it's, it's a little bit easier to... At least I think it's easier to run... Um, but, you know, as I was building this, I started thinking to myself, I could have done this different. I could have done this a lot better, um, or easier, I should say. And, um, you know, I, I, I was su super hyper-focused because, um, well, first of all, this isn't the first time I built this setup. In fact, the first time is this. This is the first thing I built. And as you can see, it's a crazy contraption. Um, eh, how do I even like begin this? Um, so when I was really starting out this episode, I, I wanted to kind of have this industrial thing going on. And boy, did I accomplish it. But it really was complicated. And, um, and I didn't really know how to edit the video. I didn't know how to explain it. Um, it's something I've been having trouble with even now um but also like this was all hand built i totally forgot about blueprints and um honestly i'm really happy with it i have it i have it saved so like i can always come back to it in some iteration but i have like uh, all of our, our assemblers here so this was set up where we have 10 and uh, 10 10 and 10 and everything over here is like um, screws and, and plates and all that, but it gets even more complicated. So as we come down here, this is all kind of a sushi belt of things that has gotten backed up, of course, because it has nowhere to go. And but check <laughs> this is this is just nuts over here. So like I had all of these these <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. I was just slapping it all together. Um, this took me a few minutes. I think it just took me about 10 hours. I think I took a day off from work and I was just doing this. And it's just like, it's so complicated. Um, but I like some of the elements in it. And then let's go down to the other part. This is the part that was stressing me out the most. And that is all of this. Uh, let's come up here. Um, so yeah, so everything, as I said before, my original idea was like we bring it all down here and plus it's all working so we get to kind of see it go and um, bring everything into here that then sort of got stored and then it all went out through belts and more belts and more belts and then uh, things came out from down here and then they went through some smart splitters uh, this was just it was stressing me out because I was like no 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 this is just this is just too much. Look at all these screws right here. So all these screws were being fed. And I'm going to fall off. So you know what? Screw it. We can fly. We can fly in this one. We're not technically cheating. So let's just take a look at this thing. This thing was just so complicated. It was... I don't know. what I just like... No. I, I was like, no. I don't want to do this. Um, but... So from here, I... Um, that's where I said, okay, we're going to do blueprints because honestly, I wasted a bunch of time here, obviously. Uh, so let's go back to the blueprints. So honestly, I just felt like this and this was just so much cleaner. And not to mention what I forgot to show you before was I had overclocked the crap out of all of these uh, smelters over here because I was also still relying on the fact that this side of the base was going to be copper. But let's go over to the blueprint maker because there's something... We could have done different over here. And, uh, you know, I'm not making a good exit in and out here. So we'll just... What is what is this? Why is this here? Weird. This is what we could have built. And um, 
honestly, it's just like as I'm going, I'm just realizing this would have been so much simpler. Uh, so this would have been all the iron coming in and then going up and then uh, there would have been an output over here and then we could have put like something like a, like a, um, another blueprint where it would just kind of stick between the two here for inputs and outputs. Um, so that's that's one thing that we could have done. Except I've already done it. So uh, I just don't know. Like here it is with modular um, self-contained units and I, it's just something about it I just didn't like. So. I tried this design as well, but I end up breaking it down. But as you can see here, everything is just so much cleaner. So um, we'll have our resources coming up and to our another sandwich where we will be distributing our resources for our uh, assemblers. And uh, so I went ahead and already did that. So we can go ahead and take a look at that uh, setup. Honestly, I think everything at this point is pretty self-explanatory. I mean, I could get down to more like exact, like, okay, I used uh, 10 foundations here and there. Um, if, if that's something you're interested in, uh, let me know. But I, I honestly, what's been stressing me out these last few weeks is like, how do I like convey all this information? Like uh, this game is, uh, this save has gone to, I think my last one, I'm at 43 hours and I don't know how to like turn that into 30 minute videos. So that's something I've been really learning. But if you're finding it hard to follow, let me know. I will try to do something different. But I think it's pretty self-explanatory at this point. It's just like, what do we do with all this stuff and what kind of design that we can come up with here? Um, so of course, here we are, we're bringing in those resources that we were making and then we're distributing them out to um, our assemblers on the left here and our assemblers on the right. So over here is strictly reinforced iron plates. So we come over here you can see that we are making reinforced iron plates. We're taking 30 iron and 60 screws. And then over here, we have uh, three assemblers. Um, so this one's making rotors. This one's making rotors. This one's making rotors. And of course, we have our, our similar power design where we have uh, our, our painted beams to help hide uh, the, the wires a little differently. Um, and then let's see, so we have uh, the three three here, and then this one is actually underclocked, so it's producing only two. So that gives us 10 rotors, and then we have our alternate uh, recipe for our modular frame here, which is giving us a total of 10 um, modular frames per minute. And so these three assemblers are making nothing but the reinforced iron plate that we need for this guy, which takes uh, 7.5, was it? Yeah, it was 7.5. Yeah, 7.5. So we're producing 15 to all together over here. And uh, that then comes up through here and then is routed along the, uh, the roof here. And we're taking advantage of our ceiling mounts, which is a really cool addition to, was, this, was it this update? I think it was. Um, and honestly, these things are really cool because like, they really help making these like like these splitters above here. Like originally we just come over here and we can just be like, you know, splitter and then just stack them and then delete them. But what's neat here is you can just be like, okay, let's say, say I got a line right here and I want to like take a merger and come over here. Oh, I accidentally put that really close. Uh, let me just grab that and put it right here. All right, so we're going to make a line here and we're going to go that way with it, let's say. Um, this might be too close, actually. Let's just make sure we have enough room. All right, I'm just, it's really simple. All right, so like, um, all right. There it is, it's, it's lined up with this. So we just uh, back up one. And then, uh, then we'll say we want a merger here. And then we just make sure we are facing the direction we want. And then we point it at the end here. Snap it together. Now, if this was already in the game, uh, some way, uh, in another way, then, uh, you know, foolish of me not to notice. But uh, then again, I haven't really played this game as many hours as many others have. So, you know, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, it made uh, doing things a little easier um, when it came to, like, just running these lines up here and keeping everything nice and straight without a whole bunch of deleting. So um, now what we're doing here is we have... Um, 
So these are all screws. We have our screws, our 100 and, what was it, 160 over here, and then our 200s over here. And then, um, then whatever is left over comes out of our smart splitters and then into this merger that then gets fed over to here that then is made for our one assembler which is making our rotors and then all this stuff just feeds down here and then all of our uh, modular frames and our rotors come down a sushi belt here and then everything is going to be fed out this way uh, in a sushi fashion or you know maybe there, I think there'll be like a couple of dedicated lines of, of belts I mean of screws and regular plates and reinforced iron plates and then there'll be some extra rods from our um, production here because we don't need a whole lot of rods and I'm making 120 to begin with uh, which comes actually through here over to here and then down this way and then into our assemblers there so yeah um, this is uh, this is coming out really nice um, and then of course everything goes this way and uh, yeah I wasn't really sure what I was gonna do with this but yeah here we are so that is going to do it for this episode there's just still so much more to do and we're going to be building a storage facility here and of course we got to come over here and uh, rip all of this out and start building copper and since um since i have better blueprints now we're going to try to utilize the blueprint a lot uh, more efficiently over here um i could have done better over here but it is what it is I think it came out clean and uh, then we'll have to do a bunch of aesthetics. We'll have to put this over there and I still got to figure out how I want that building to look overall. Other than that, uh, I think I think we're on a good start here. So uh, I appreciate you all taking, out, taking a look at my video and uh, I will see you all in the next one. Like and subscribe. Tell me what you thought. If you think I could do better, let me know. I um, value all your inputs and uh, I will see you then.